All right, so uh, let's get started. Welcome to our FCS seminar series. Uh, I'm very glad to have uh, Dr. Kamal Apeya to uh, come to give a talk. And uh, he's, a, he's a professor at the uh, Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering. And uh, let me say a few things about what he's doing. And uh, uh, Dr. Akaya leads the uh, Advanced Wireless and Security Lab advice, very nice mm -hmm. name, um, uh, at FIU, and his research is in the uh, mobile and wireless networks, internet of things, and cyber physical systems. And uh, he's uh, uh, currently an area editor for the ad hoc networks, and uh, has been sort of on the editorial uh, board, uh, is being on the editorial board at IEEE Communication Surveys and Tutorials. And he has organized many conferences, including LCN, ICC, Globecom, and so on and so forth. So there are a lot. So uh, he has published uh, more than 100 papers in these areas and been cited over 2,000 times. Um, and uh, he's a member of the uh, IEEE Technical Committee on the Communication, Cybersecurity, Smart Cities, and Online Social Networks. So let's keep a big thank for it. And he's going to talk about uh, how to get rich using Bitcoin. <laughs> so that's what I'm expecting. <laughs> thank you, Jason. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me? I don't know if it's yeah, on my microphone. Okay. So uh, I'll talk about our ongoing research. Uh, on, it was about e electric vehicle charging. But we, we found a venue that you know we need to also do payments for charging, so we decided to use uh, Bitcoin for that. And, and eventually it came out to be a building Bitcoin uh, payment network. So uh, this is a recent work with my PhD students. Uh, it's actually ongoing, so we submitted a paper and a proposal. Uh, before I started that, a uh, little bit about the uh, advanced wireless and security lab that I uh, uh, lead, uh, what kind of research uh, we focus on uh, right now. It's mostly about security and privacy aspects of IoT, Internet of Things, and cyber physical systems. So um, in cyber physical systems, we focus on energy systems, smart grids. Uh, we have projects for secure smart meter communications and key management from the Department of Energy and um, uh, the NSF National Science Foundation. We have projects about um, defending the network, so we're using software defined networking, um, so SDN based resilience and uh, defense, uh, forensics. And finally, we have projects on intelligent transportation. We do a lot of security, privacy, uh, and um, uh, drone communications with, um, for intelligent transportation. So these projects, these are the concepts that we focus, but uh, the, the funded research is coming from different agencies, mainly uh, uh, heavily. Uh, I was funded by NSF, uh, and you see a list of uh, projects we uh, uh, have been working on recently. We also have an REU site, which is for undergrads, um, bringing uh, undergrad students for doing security in IoT. Um, and uh, we have a, a, a center uh, uh, funded by the Department of Energy, and we have other uh, agencies like uh, state agency for the Cybersecurity Center, uh, Cisco, and uh, Qatar Foundations. They, they give grants uh, jointly with uh, the U.S. universities. So uh, this is an overview of what we do, and uh, recently we got into this blockchain uh, research with some of my students. Um, one of my students was doing key management and then he, he was interested in using blockchain in key management and eventually got into that space. And then they, they figured out that, okay, we're doing a lot of electric vehicle um, research, especially in, in communication, security, and privacy. Um, so uh, there is uh, a lot of issues there uh, in terms of um, security and privacy, but there's also the issue of... Uh, uh, payment for charging. So I want to give a little bit of background um, before we start where we came from the, for motivating the problem. So I'm sure you're aware of electric vehicles right now becoming uh, increasingly available in the world. The U.S. is a little bit uh, uh, behind, but uh, China, for instance, is investing a lot in electric vehicles because of 
a certain uh, motivations, economic uh, energy benefits, and um, they would like to use these electric vehicles like uh, mobile um, suppliers of energy, you know, when you don't have uh, energy uh, after uh, disasters. And uh, the number of e EVs uh, are increasing. Uh, so if you see some numbers here, after 2020, we'll see five millions every year in the world. And in the US, uh, I believe it's, it's about 500,000 uh, right now. Uh, and we'll hit one million uh, in, in two years period. And you have seen a lot of uh, examples of like Tesla obviously is, is the lead here. But um, Nissan Leaf, Chevy Volt, these are the example. Uh, electric vehicle cars that we are seeing, uh, people are buying them because of incentives and uh, we will see that increase but the issue with electric vehicles is that you know, we need to charge them. Uh, so charging is a major issue in terms of a number of things. Uh, so it's not like uh, the, uh, the traditional uh, fuel-based vehicles that we are using. Um, you cannot charge them quickly because um, it takes time. So if you look at Tesla's example, um, the model, model S, uh, you can charge in 12 hours. Uh, and it depends on what kind of type of charger you use. So sometimes it's, it's uh, quicker if you use a high voltage uh, charger, like 440 volts. It takes about one and a half hour, right? So, but. Eventually, it's not like 10 or 5 minutes that, that we do for fuel charging. So it, it takes time. Plus, uh, uh, this is a lot of a big charge, actually. If you, if you compare how much it is, it's, it's, uh, it, it can actually uh, feed a traditional United States house for a couple days, that uh, battery. Um, and the other problem is that it takes uh, 12 hours to charge this, and then you can only drive uh, 350 miles. And this is the max, actually. Typically, it's 200 right now with other vehicles, but Tesla is the best. Uh, uh, so that means you need to do frequent charging. Uh, and the cost is not a big deal. It's, it's about, for this example here for Tesla, it's about $12. Right, so. Um, this created a new kind of market model for charging electric vehicles. So you see these uh, charging stations uh, for uh, vehicles like Tesla has its own charging stations. And now people are, are uh, converting their garage to charging uh, stations that they can charge, charge their own electric vehicles. Or even they can, um, you know, provide charging for people, sell it. Um, and then there is this new concept uh, of vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle charging. So it's like peer-to-peer -peer network. So uh, if uh, you are stranded, then you can uh, call another uh, vehicle, and there is a there is a device that can do um, charge transfer from a, a vehicle to the other, uh, and you can charge your car that way. So that creates this option of, you know, if you have that um, uh, charger uh, in your trunk, then you can uh, use it to uh, provide charge or sell charge to people. Like, let's say I, I come here, I don't have enough charge, I, I am at work, and I, I, I use the app. There's an app to match these people. And they will come to the parking lot, charge your car, and, you know, you pay it. Uh, from your phone, right? And you can additionally pay a service fee, right? So you don't need to wait, you don't need to deal with scheduling, etc. So that creates this, this new model, market model for charging. And, um, you know, you'll have these different options. The, the issue then comes to, from our perspective, is the price. So when you have these charging stations and you charge frequently, and you communicate your scheduling information with those charging stations, that creates a privacy issue because they will be able to track you. So your location can be tracked, um, and from there they can find out your habits, etc. So it's a classical privacy uh, problem. That has been studied a lot. I mean, there are lots of papers on this. Um, so initially I was in that, in that domain. 
trying to uh, write papers on how to provide privacy preserving algorithms for uh, hiding your, your uh, uh, location and using sophisticated techniques like homomorphic encryption, differential privacy, etc. So a lot of people are there and we actually wrote proposals. Uh, there was a proposal that we submitted. They, they liked the idea and then one of the reviewers said, well, uh, you know, you're doing this sophisticated algorithms, but how about the payment? So you still do the payment through credit card, then you know, it doesn't make sense because you're still exposing your location. So it will not be privacy away. <laughs> uh, so I looked at that domain, I found out that there is a, another um, a domain of researchers doing like how to provide privacy for payment systems. And so eventually we, we thought like, okay, can we use these cryptocurrencies because they, they're kind of providing uh, uh, privacy, right? So can we, can we use cryptocurrencies for, for paying for it rather than the credit cards? Um, so that's how we got into this domain. And then we said, okay, we, we know Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is widely used. So um, we, we started considering Bitcoin for paying uh, for this type of chart, right? But the issue is, you know, if you're familiar with the, the Bitcoin, uh, it uh, has a transaction fee. It's a certain transaction fee. So whatever the, the transaction amount is, you need to pay that transaction fee. And it's, uh, it depends. It changed from, I don't know the exact amount, but probably 15 to $20 you need to pay. So regardless of the transaction amount, you are sending $1 million or $1, it doesn't matter. You still need to pay because there are miners uh, who, who are going to uh, do proof of work for your transaction, and uh, you need to pay them, right? Uh, so that's the other problem, is that they need to validate your transaction, <coughs> and you know, for Bitcoin, uh, this is notoriously high. That the, it takes a lot of time, and people are making money out of this validation. They are miners, right? You know, I'm sure you have heard about miners. Uh, so it takes a lot of time to validate your transaction, so you cannot really use it here. You cannot wait for your transaction to be validated. So those are those are the two um, uh, problems that that are there for for if if you'd like to use Bitcoin for electric vehicle charging, uh, which takes like ten twenty dollars each time. You want to pay another ten twenty dollars. So how long is the time when you say you can't wait for a long time? Uh, how long? Uh, yeah, you don't know. Okay. But that's it depends. Is there, is there, I mean, you, you couple, can be into a hour. couple of yeah, hours. You can wait an hour with the probability. If there's some certain probability that the transaction is accepted, but uh, there's also probability that a week later the transaction is accepted. Is this because of the scale? I, I mean, I, I'm trying to say. No, so it's because, because of the proof of work. Yeah. Right. So you need to. Uh, there, there is a hash function that you need to find yeah, out, right. and you need to try it, and it takes a lot of time. But that's, a, that's because of the, uh, the computation? It's yes, there, computation, right? computation. They have these miners in, in China. Right, yeah. so <laughs> they make a lot of money. What I is you need, a, you need a time to charge anyway, so it's going to take, as you say, going to take 12 hours. Is, is that, I'm just trying to... Well, I mean, if it's problem. like, it takes two hours, so there are, there are the examples of like two hours charging time, for, waiting time. The, yeah. So you will not be validated in two hours, probably. So it will take more time. So then the question is, okay, can we uh, address these issues? So we were thinking about this, and then we found that there is a uh, mechanism of Bitcoin, which is called off-chain, that uh, allows you to do transactions without getting into uh, this uh, proof of work thing. It's, I, I'm gonna ta talk about that, but it's, it's mainly a, like an escrow account, so you can temporarily uh, do transactions during the day, and at the end of the day, you can wrap up everything and, and do just one transaction uh, that will be validated um, by Bitcoin. So we thought, okay, if we use this concept, maybe we can address this issue. And uh, they will also uh, address the, the, the transfer fee because now you will have uh, interactions, uh, transactions, 
that you don't need to wait for validation. And then it will not take much time, but so it will also address that uh, validation time issue. And also it will address the privacy issue because it's Bitcoin, so nobody knows who, who are the users, right? That they, they, they is anonymity. So it will bring us these three benefits. If we can build a charge payment network among these charge stations. So that was the problem that uh, we tackled. And the solution would be based on this off-chain mechanism. And uh, here is in more details what off-chain is, because this, this is very important to understand the problem. So um, off-chain is um, something like an escrow account. So let's say there's Alice and Bob, and they'd like to do transactions, right? Um, and what they do is they put money to an escrow account. So in this figure, you see this escrow A and B. Uh, so I put, they put $5, let's say, right? So, or Alice puts $5 in that um, escrow account. And uh, during the day, Alice uh, does transactions with Bob. So Alice sends, for instance, here one Bitcoin. So now Alice, uh, it, it was five, right, initially. Now it, uh, it's four, and Bob receives one. And then another transaction, two. Uh, so Bob uh, receives two, it, it increases to three. And finally, another transaction uh, with one Bitcoin. So Bob is, is now increased to four, Alice is decreased to one. So eventually the situation is Alice has one, Bob four, right? So now you can wrap up this uh, transaction and just do one transaction, right? So these transactions were off chain, so you don't need to pay for them, you don't need to wait for the uh, um, validation, right? But this one, when you close the, the uh, account, then you need to find out the uh, net transaction and pay for it. So there's one transaction fee when you open the channel, right? And then there's one transaction fee when you close the channel. The rest you can do a lot of transactions free, right? So this is our, our motivation. We said, okay, if as a vehicle owner you open a channel with a charging station and you put some money to escrow account, let's say monthly, let's say, you know, you, you say, I'm going to spend $500 for charging this month. So you put that amount there and you pay the transaction fee. And then during the month you spend from that account, right? So you don't need to pay anything. And then at the end of the month, if your actual spending is $400, they will give you a hundred back and close the account, right? So this way you're just paying twice uh, the Bitcoin fee and you don't need to wait. You're just waiting two times for validation, right? So this uh, concept may apply to our case because there's a lot of transactions, frequent transactions, although the transaction amount is small but you know you charge multiple times, right? Um, so we decided to apply this idea to build that network that I was um, describing. So uh, eventually, um, I'll talk about attack model, but eventually what it, it came out to be an interesting problem of network topology formation. So, <laughs> It's not security and privacy, maybe it's Jason's uh, expertise. So you create a topology uh, of, uh, it's a network of charging stations, uh, establishing channels between them, and uh, you try to meet certain constraints. Right? So uh, if you look at this example here, we have a number of charging stations in, let's say, in South Florida, right? Question? Yes. Actually, I have a question on the previous one. Okay. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, I have also. Yeah. Uh, how is this process different from the credit card? That you effectively open some kind of account that uh, escrow uh, will maintain your account. So where is the privacy coming from? I think it's, it's this mechanism is, is, is for Bitcoin, right? So it's not part of the, the banking system. No, because we just different parties that can track not the bank, not the visa, but the, the escrow. This charging station will know uh, which account was used. I mean, it doesn't know who the person is, but, the, but it will know that this account was charged from this station, that other station. And so it can but it, it, you know, you don't know the identity, right? So the, the, the identity is anonymous, and I'll, I'll show at the end that you know the payments that you made is not through the charging station that you're physically charging. It's through another charging station, and the payments are traveling uh, partially in the network. So it's really hard to track the payments. That's that's the beauty of uh, the the topology that we create. No, but it's, I think it's really irrelevant to the topology. Payments in Bitcoin are associated with public, and the whole information is public. So you can always track uh, how many uh, transactions associated with the public. So anybody can uh, figure out that. So, I mean, it, it doesn't know the identity of the people, but it is yeah, but the. I mean, the issue is the identity, right? So if you if you track certain identities, then you can find out who that person is, but you know, not the actual identity. But what I'm trying to say is that if if you uh, make this in a way that you know you pay uh, to different uh, station and then the payments are divided into different uh, payments uh, charging stations, then it will be difficult uh, to track um, the the that identity. So I don't know. Uh, let's say. I don't, I'm not using my name, right? I'm using my identity X. So you can find out what payments I, I do, but those payments, what I'm saying, is, is traveling through different channels. So it's really di difficult to, to track uh, those payments and find out that, okay, these are the payments that this particular X did. So that's, that's the uh, uh, privacy benefit coming from there. Okay. So, uh, one question I have is like, once you open a channel and close a channel, how long do uh, you have to wait? I mean, what's the what window of time? That That's up to you. I guess you can define that, as I said, say you can do it monthly or you can do it yearly. So, I don't in know. that case, the, 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 the one thing that during that window of time, so how Will this mechanism address the double spending problem? Okay. Uh, I think these um, the, these the, these transactions uh -huh. are just between these two, uh, so they on are one not. Channel you only can pay yeah. one guy. That's yeah. it. You cannot do that it's, it's not public. Okay. And uh, <coughs> so does, that, does that mean that you only have two parties? Two parties for the for for those transact off, off chain transactions, so but chain when it comes to this this transaction at the end of the day, that's public. That is broadcast to everyone, so everybody sees it. But in that case, like for if you go to another place and you have to do charging, like let's say, and then um, you have to create another escrow account. No, there is in in our model we assume that you have you register to a, a, one. only one. But charging station and all the payments are, are um, uh, initiated from from that charging. But you create multiple cha I mean, different channels for each um, uh, transaction, uh, uh, each pair, right? Yes, every if every but electric vehicle coming from the same account. So that means that you are relying on that uh, the escrow account will keep track of the money and they will make sure that you are not double spending or something, since it is coming from the same part, right? So it, it's between me and my charging station, right, for, for off-chain. Uh -huh. But uh, once I, I close the account, then it's everybody knows it. Yes. 
So but let's say you are here, and this is monthly. The windows are just like one month away, and maybe you are driving to Orlando or, or, or let's say Georgia, you went there, and you are charging, and you have to pay somebody else there. No, you're, you're still paying um, through your uh, registered um, charging station. Oh, okay. So it's like, it's Orlando that you need to pay, but it, it, it initiates from Miami and, and uh, goes through so, okay. others. Okay. 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 But the channel actually is basically out and off, right? Yes. I didn't get the question, I'm sorry. <laughs> so was she asking us, the only two persons here, Alice and Bob, mm -hmm. who are coached by another place, how, how that works out, is that yeah. Yeah. But there's a network. So uh, you're, 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 you're tapping into network uh, from one location. You make your payment to a charging station, but it's, there's a network that is, it's, it's going to uh, different uh, destinations that you are physically charging. And you're tracking in that network is not possible? Like yeah, 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 because your, your identity is, is um, not known. And the payments, as uh, I was mentioning, Alex's question, that um, the payments are divided. So you're not using one channel. Let's say you, you're going to pay $100. You're paying uh, $30 here, $30 there, 30, you know, $40 here. So they're, they're traveling through different routes. Would you want not to know your uh, location? Is that the, I mean, yeah, or in other sense, like, like who is your adversary? Is that That's the here, right? <laughs> what is that? Uh, uh, yeah. So we, we uh, the attack model is a passive adversary who tries <coughs> to uh, undermine your user by looking at um, the payment traffic or joining the network as a charging station or compromising some fraction of nodes. Um, this is our, our uh, tech model. We are not. So you're, you're trusting the uh, charging station. So if they know your location, that doesn't. That is yeah, a charging station that you're, you're registered with uh, will know your location. Yeah, yeah. that guy. But when, yeah. like, that you, you are paying, uh, paying someone in Georgia, so and it initiates from Miami and then goes through that network. So even Georgia guy will know that oh, where this money is coming from. It's from coming from the. Uh, he will know, but he will not know who, whose money is this, right? Okay. Yeah. So, you had a lot of questions that yeah. I didn't get into the model yet. Uh, so this was a, the example that I was trying to say that, uh, so, here. so this guy, for instance, electric vehicle one, uh, registers to station A here, right? Uh, and she declares that she plans to use um, let's say F and C, like this one or uh, that one here. Uh, and if she charges through the, those um, uh, charging stations, then um, the, the payment should be um, going through this uh, uh, station A, which uh, she was uh, registered. So, um, we assume that everybody will be registered to a charging station. Uh, and there may be a lot of assumptions here in terms of you know, uh, which charging stations you are using. But we, we made those assumptions in the experiment. Uh, it's a simple setup for now, because this is an ongoing uh, study. So eventually, um, the problem is this. You want to establish a network, um, we want to use optimization, right? So it turned out to be a mixed integer programming, uh, which is similar to multi-commodity flow problem. And the issue is, I mean, uh, conceptually, you want to create a, a very distributed network that, um, that will have links that are distributed to the nodes uh, evenly. And the flows will not be just uh, using certain links. 
So we want to evenly distribute the flows as well, so that in this case it will it will be fair to everybody. Like, let's say there are two charging stations and all the payments are pay, you know, passing through those charging stations. Then it's not fair, because why does that charging station invest in creating channels with others? Because you need to pay for it, right? So everybody should uh, contribute equally so that we can have a fair uh, distribution of the costs because there's a cost for establishing uh, links, right? Um, and then we don't want to create a lot of links to everybody because opening a link is there's a fee for it. So we want to minimize the number of links as well. And as I said, we don't want you know uneven distribution, so there's a fairness um, concept here that you know some nodes should not bear most of the load. We want to do an even distribution, so we define that a, a, a cost function uh, that includes these three factors. One is the uh, the unit uh, flowing through the network. Uh, that's the unit flow cost. That's the the, the transactions. C, and then the channel establishment cost. So when you create a channel, a link, there's a fee, Bitcoin fee for it, and that is uh, represented by uh, fixed, that's a fixed fee, so we use uh, CF. And then there is this unfairness cost that I was mentioning, which is uh, gamma, that you know we wanna keep it evenly distributed. So eventually, the model is trying to minimize a function that includes these three parameters. And obviously, there are uh, constraints that are related to flow uh, uh, equations. So the flow is, for instance, uh, it's a transaction that you know you pay to a charging station, and then from charging station, it is flowing through other charging stations, right? So those those are the flows, and uh, there's a lot of notation, and I don't want to get into details of, of this, but uh, mainly. Uh, there is SI, which is the total amount supplied by a user to a station J. So a user is paying certain amount of money to a station for charging. DJ, D sub J, is the total demand of station J from all users who place pays an amount to station J. So uh, the station will be uh, receiving uh, from different users uh, the, these. Uh, um, payments that is represented by DJ and uh, what I'm trying to describe is this actually the flow conservation is that you know when, when there are flows coming to this uh, charging station and this, and this incoming flows outgoing flows you need to have um, them uh, equal so uh, there are various uh, uh, um, constraints in the model that that ensure these uh, things that you see here. For instance, for node A, sum of all incoming payments, uh, X flow here should be equal to sum of all outgoing flows. That's called Y flow. So these are all included. So eventually, uh, we solve this by using a Groby optimizer uh, as a solver from Groby. Python based, uh, and there are lots of assumptions that we made. So these are the things that you know we can change, but we assume ten stations and uh, eighty customers. Each customer uh, is assumed to be using six different stations because you know you may be um, visiting different locations, and they make uh, ten units or so ten dollars of transactions to the uh, stations, um, and. For units, units uh, for transaction flows, we we assume uh, one unit cost, uh, and we change the parameters for the fee, the the fixed fee for creating a channel, which is CF from 50 to 500, and gamma is the I'm sorry, this this should be the other one. So CF is from 20 to 80, and gamma is the fairness uh, parameter. So if you increase gamma, you are very sensitive to fairness. You want 
almost equal distribution. But if you decrease gamma, you're not really caring much about um, uh, fairness. So <clears throat> based on this setup, we came up with some metrics and still trying to identify better metrics. But the, the best metric was this something called between the centrality of, an, of a node. So this is a, a measure that shows how many times a node is visited while traversing from one node to another. So it's in routing, this is used a lot, that you know, if your node is something like a hop, everybody's passing through that node. That has a you know, high between the centrality. So here we use this because we don't want nodes to have um, very diverse between the centrality measures at the end of uh, the day because if that's the case then you have a lot of no a lot of hub nodes that you know collects traffic to to um, to themselves and this is not fair because we don't want a station to uh, bear most of the traffic so we want equal distribution of between the centrality uh, for each node Total capacity of the network is the uh, total uh, investment amount in the escrow accounts. So that's the capacity. So you put some money initially. When you create a link, you put some money. And that means you can use up to that amount on that link. Right? So if, if you say this is a $200 link, then you can, um, you, can spend, you can do transactions up to 200 You cannot exceed that. Uh, and the number of edges is, is the number of channels you create. So uh, if you are creating a lot of channels, obviously that is costly because each channel has a fee. Right? So that's why it's, it's a, an important metric too. And then we decided, okay, how can we compare this with uh, um, other approaches like what are the benchmarks? So, Two benchmarks we, we uh, decided. One is a, a topology called Hub and Spock. So you're familiar with the uh, networking people are familiar with this type of uh, topology. That you know, there are certain hops, like in this case, uh, the, the, these two, seven, and nine, are, are uh, connected to most of the uh, nodes, and the traffic will pass through those nodes, right? So it's it's a Hub and Spock uh, uh, topology. So they bear mo most of the flow, and you can imagine that the flow between seven and nine will be the highest, right? Because it's like the backbone of, uh, of the network. But if you consider random, it's a, it's a connected, uh, fully connected, uh, so everybody's connected to everybody, but it's random, so it's not designed based on our model. But you use the starting degree, right? In this case, we use three connected, but it can be in a random. Uh, we're, we're still generating different, um, different topologies based on the number of nodes. So the number of nodes that we tried was 10. That's why we were limited. Um, and the reason I will tell you that uh, the optimizer only uh, works for 10 nodes. <laughs> so it takes, it, it takes forever to we tried 15 nodes. And it was like two weeks, it didn't finish. So this, these are the initial results that uh, seem promising. So this is between the centrality and comparing hub and spot, random, and our approach. And our approach, we, we tried different gamma parameters. So those gamma parameters are, are measuring the uh, uh, unfairness. Right? So if you look at it, the hub and spot, uh, these are the node, nodes, node numbers that are um, sorted based on the between the uh, centrality score. So this, this guy has the highest between the centrality score for hub and spot. Uh, so it's, it's uh, decreasing, right? So when you look at it, in hub and spot, there are two nodes, as you may guess, in that figure is a seven and nine, with the highest between the uh, centrality uh, 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 measure, right? The rest are pretty much flat, which is nice, but we don't want this situation. Because in this case, 
these two charging stations will do most of the investment, and that's not fair, and they will not accept this, right? If you look at the random, it's pretty good uh, in terms of the balance. So you see there are still a number of nodes that are uh, a little higher, but uh, still it's not as bad as uh, uh, Aben spot. But when you look at our approach, it's pretty good, especially with uh, this red one here. So very close to each other, and same for uh, the blue one here, right? light blue. Right, so they are almost equal, means everybody has the same or similar between the centrality figure. Can you say something about that graph again? What, the, what the 50 and the 600 mean? Yeah, so the gamma is the, the unfairness uh, parameter. So if you increase gamma, you are very sensitive about the unfairness. So. Uh, sensitive is like you want everybody almost equal load, right? So that's why when you look at this one, the light blue one, it's almost equal, right? And that's it, the reason is that it's the highest gamma. But when you lower the gamma, see there's a little uh, variations because you're not really uh, as sensitive as uh, this blue, light blue one in terms of uh, fairness. So you, you, can, you can tolerate some of the nodes being a little high load, some of them low load. So, so, so I, I probably missed something here. So is the gamma used to uh, form the network, or is the gamma used for selecting the, the, the nodes? It, it influences the network formation. So if you pick gamma highest, uh, like in this case six, 650, that means you want a network perfectly, you know, equal yeah. in terms of loads. Yeah, so the, the solver will take that into account and will try different options to, to find out the best. When you say the solver? You Opt the optimizer, the, yeah. The, the, the optimizer, is there a, a constraint or is it, I didn't see the gamma there. Well, I, I didn't put it in the uh, uh, yeah. equations, but in the, it's in the equations that you know, we can play with it oh, as a parameter. Okay. So, Eventually, the, this is a topology generated by 10 nodes by our uh, optimizer. Uh, and this is the link capacities. I just, uh, and and uh, the gamma is 650. This is the best one, right? Uh, and you see the number of links uh, from each node is almost like, like three connected, right? And if you look at the link capacity, so this is the link cost uh, between nodes. Uh, if you look at, for instance, Station one and station two. Is that station one and two? This link is 366. That's the flow uh, capacity, right? So if you look at the numbers, these numbers are close to each other. They are not perfect and they are not equal, but that's the goal of the optimizer, right? So try to make sure that these numbers that you see here are very much close to each other, so that we have this um, uh, fairness. So. Um, I guess that's okay. One more thing here is the time required. So I'll, I'll get your question. Uh, so, so the time it takes to, to get the results it depends on this. Uh, interestingly, um, uh, the fee fixed uh, fee that we try from twenty to a hundred. So uh, for twenty, you can see it takes ten to the power five, like about 30 hours to finish an experiment with 10 nodes. <coughs> but if it's um, 100, then you see it's a, maybe 20, 20 seconds, it will complete. So it makes a big difference, but uh, the issue is that this is for 10 nodes. So as I said, if you increase it to 20 nodes, <laughs> then it takes days and it doesn't finish. So that's the, that's the problem of uh, optimization. Uh, and we are, that's why we're now considering heuristics, because you want to test this for, for 100 nodes, then obviously this will not work. Right, so, is a question? Okay, so, uh, you know, without taking the you know, payment and stuff, uh, uh, the normal optimization problem, so it, it appears that it's a, uh, it's a common, fairly common uh, guess that 
optimization is is there. So you just map the problem it, into it, the. It is inspired from a multi uh, flow commodity problem, but it's not there. You need to adapt it to your setting. But this is how operation researchers. No, no, no I'm, 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 I'm just saying that you know, do you definitely this is uh, fascinating that you found uh, one very suitable yeah. application, and this is definitely. It's Actually, there's a today, there's gonna be problems. Yeah, there's a good, uh, good piece of work missing there. Uh, it's mapping of, of this problem, uh, or reducing this problem from multi-flow uh, commodity problem, uh, to show that it's MP hard. So this is MP. This looks like MP hard. We haven't, <laughs> we couldn't prove it, but there can be another paper which shows that this is MP hard and includes the proof. But probably in the future, uh, we will need someone from algorithms <laughs> to do that. So, yeah, this is pretty much it. Uh, we were able to get this nice topology at the end, which we might the link establishment code, but also a voice the top and spoke model. That, that was the goal. We want to have a purely peer-to-peer -peer network. Um, and but we found out that, you know, as the constraints becomes looser, then it takes uh, more time to uh, converge and find a solution. So right now, we're considering to come up with a sub-optimal heuristic that will scale better. Um, and then we're also considering to implement this in NS3. There's a framework called IROHA in um, blockchain that, that is used for blockchain. And we want to integrate it with the NS3 so that we can have the communication and the consensus problem, etc. So that's also uh, a plan for the future. So that's that's it. <laughs> We're on time. Okay. So I have ten ten minutes. Yeah. Perfect time. So uh, any questions? So, yes. So uh, I, you know, last week they released the Bitcoin Lightning Network. So how do you see uh, you know because you were interested in uh, off chain scalability of the problem and uh, even though that's not the contribution of your work, but you know, uh, you know how does it help you that you know having the Lightning Network that would be able to do I, I didn't quite follow those uh, okay. uh, developments, so maybe these guys can <laughs> better show. <laughs> no. I actually have a question on um, similar line. Uh, so one of the premises that you put in your in your work is that uh, Bitcoin has a transaction cost. Yes. Uh, but uh, there are some several, not just one, uh, cryptocurrency that is designed not to have transaction. Yes, yeah, it's a, so a, a term. Uh, IOTA. Yeah, 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 I heard they that. Kind of they position themselves as a fast uh, machine optimized. Yes, I have heard that one. This, the one that we, the reason we chose, chose this one was like it's very widely available. So we thought like, you know, this, everybody's using this, so it will be convenient to use uh, for charging purposes. So that's where we came from. But obviously, you know, that can be another venue. But the issue is that if nobody's using it, yeah, it's a good solution, but it's not prevalent. Yeah. Iota has a perfect hash function. Yeah, so can be considered, yes. But, but. So, <laughs> possible to obfuscate that communication between two nodes? It's possible what? Obfuscate <laughs> the communication, so you're saying like it's possible to check the public key between some power and a charging station. And it's then it's going to be the same. Generate public key on the fly, and what do you mean? I mean, what's so what's the purpose? The is like trying to obfuscate the public key so that it's, it's not possible to map the communication within a pair. So even if you don't know the identity of the public key, so that's perfectly fine. But can you try to also like randomize the public key? Uh, that's, I don't know, that's a different issue, right? It's, it's, yeah, these, these public keys are assigned once, right? So it's not like symmetric keys that we can change each time. So I'm not sure if there is such a solution. Any uh, other questions?